Hello. It might come as a surprise to some of you to know that I do a lot of planning. By planning, I mean using planners and Kanban board and all this. So I wanted to go through it with you in case, in case it might help you or just sometimes I'm curious at what other people do. So that's what this video is going to be about. Planning would seem to be counterintuitive for an artist to begin with. But the thing is, there are certain goals I want to achieve. And the only way that I can know that I'll reach those goals is to be sure that I'm working toward them as often as possible. This doesn't mean that I don't just follow the muse sometimes wherever it takes me. I don't have some flexibility because I do. But overall, I need to make sure I follow a certain map to get me to where I intend to go. First off, I have ADHD and anxiety and depression. And if I were to follow my muse all the time, I would be bouncing back and forth between projects, between goals, and very likely wind up somewhere that isn't where I wanted to be in the first place. There are certain things I need to be aware of when it comes to my own limitations and keeping myself healthy and happy together along the route that I want to take. So what currently works best for me right now <laughs> is to do major planning about once a year and then break it down into quarters and then monthly. And we're coming up on the new year here before we know it. And so I thought this would be a good time. I have a weekly routine that I follow almost all the time. Like Mondays, I know I'm going to do this. Tuesday, I need to do, you know, X. Wednesday, I do Y, you know, so forth. And I keep it a weekly list of tasks that I need to accomplish that I keep really flexible. The things that I have for like Monday, Tuesday, you know, that are daily are things like take out the trash, pick up the studio, look at my financials, look at my numbers and my stats from various social media, um, things of that nature that are not creative. If I got more granular, gran granular, granular, if I got more granular than that, I don't know how much of it I would actually accomplish. And frankly, I would be just wasting my time. I, 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 I need some of that flexibility. A lot of folks have tried uh, all kinds of planners. I mean, you name it, there's a planner for it. And I've tried a number of them over the years. And systems, there's always that system that's going to, it's going to, it's going to make it work. It's going to, this will be the one. But the one I tend to use the most often is HP90 by Sarah Cannon. She has the, I am affiliated. I will say that right up front to be clear, to be transparent. So she'll do it sometime mid-December this year. Aside from my fine art that I do on this channel, I also write nonfiction. And it's because of the writing that I found Sarah Cannon in the first place. If you really want to know how to do it, you need to get the information from her. Probably, probably mid-December, and over Christmas, a Christmas break, I will be doing my planning for 2024. So I'll sit down with a piece of paper and I'll look at where I am currently, you know, as far as stats compared to last year, uh, finances, you know, where things stack up, what have, what's worked, what hasn't worked, what's, you know, what, what do I want to do? You know, just an overall picture of, of where I'm at in things. A list. I love making lists. List. I love list. <laughs> I have list of lists. When I'm looking at what's working and what isn't working, again, this is using the pen and paper. Some people will do it digitally. They'll do it in Good Notes or whatever, you know, Google Docs or whatever works for them. But for me, there's just something about the quality of using the tactile qualities of using 
pen and paper, just that the act of it helps helps me get going, helps me get thoughts down. I'll get down to what task I want to complete any given quarter. And this usually gives me about 15 weeks total overall. And I'll loosely lay out what I want to achieve in that time frame, keeping in mind to myself uh, time off, um, you know, for being sick, appointments, you know, just flexibility. Or, and I have to remind myself that I'm not suddenly going to turn into this person that's going to be doing two or three times what I was doing before, and that that light's really distracting, isn't it? We'll pretend like it's not there. I have to be realistic. On paper, I can do amazing things. So with that, let me show you my planners. I only keep a quarter at a time in here. And I'll talk more about my planner here in a moment. But I'll put down important dates, you know, what's going on. If we're planning on going out of town that weekend or, you know, the typical things that you would. Then I look closer at the month ahead of me. I prefer to go more toward what I want to achieve in just a month than the entire quarter because a month to me is just easier to comprehend. It's easier to wrap my head around than an entire quarter at one time. I'm currently using a Happy Planner with a deluxe cover. And I don't know if these are still available or not. Um, I think the only place you can get them is uh, maybe Etsy or Poshmark. I have different sizes of these. This is a uh, classic size. Of course, it isn't necessary to have the cover, but since I have these, I go ahead and use them. It also gives me a place to stick a few stickers. The ones that I do use, I don't use very many. Uh, a few photos, you know, just information I'd like to carry with me if I, if I went somewhere. I tell myself it makes it easier for me to work outside of the home, like coffee shop or whatever. But the truth is, I really do. This usually just stays right on my desk. If you're not familiar with the Happy Planner, it is a disc-bound system. That's what these are right here. And you can take the rings off. You can change covers. You can take pages out. You can customize it to whatever works best for you. I'll take the dividers from the old ones and repurpose them. Because I am such a visual person, this is not the only planning that I do. I also use a Kanban board. And just a reminder, this is in October, so that's why there's the Halloween theme items on there. But I break it into three sections, three columns, and then three rows. And the top column is what I want to do. The middle column is what I'm working on, and then the bottom column is what I've completed. I'm in the, the state of mind where I am trying to use up things that I already have. So the washi tape that I put the lines on with is like the end of the rolls. They didn't necessarily need to match. The post-it notes, if you are considering doing something like this, you really want to use the post-it note brand because the, the cheaper ones as tempting as they are, um, they'll fall off very, very easily. This is an example of a past week. And what I do is at the beginning of the week, each week, I'll look at my Kanban board and I'll write down the task that I'm going to be doing that week. And then I kind of divvy them up where I think they'll fit during the week. Then at the end of the week, I will look back if if there's anything that needs to be moved forward, I will just move it forward to the next week. If it's something that keeps getting repeated, it keeps getting pushed forward and pushed forward. I really need to stop and look and see if it's even necessary that I do that task or if it's something I just need to knuckle down and, and get it done, get it off my plate. And anything with the definitive 
deadline is given priority. Like I know I need to get out currently one live stream and one video for my art channel a week. So I know that Monday afternoons from one to probably about three, depending upon how long I take, is gonna be used for, for that live stream. So it's blocked off, but I need to get my other video out so at some point I'm going to have to have to write down what I'm going to do it on, what I'm going to say, get it filmed, get it edited, get it uploaded, do the thumbnail and so forth for the video that I put up. And if I'm doing any extra video that week, I need to compensate for that. Here lately, I've been really liking these traveler's notebooks because they're small enough, they don't take up a lot of real estate on my desktop and I can slip them into my happy planner in my dream life where I, I go out and write places. So that's it, that's what I do to plan and keep up on plan and do things every week. If you have any questions, if you have any insights, just pop them down below in the comment section. I am trying to get to a thousand subscribers. So if you are watching this and you're not subscribed, if you would do so, I would greatly appreciate it. And I will see you all next time. Thank you. Bye-bye. Take care and be safe.